Hi there folks, thanks for clicking on the video. This is Trevor over at Vigilant Guitars out of Victoria, Canada. Uh, I've recently been uh, working on a microtonal neck uh, for a client and I've had a few folks uh, across a number of channels uh, ask what the heck I'm doing. Uh, why does the fretboard look like that? What is microtonal? How do I do it? Uh, uh, what are the options uh, is another great question. And instead of um, answering everyone uh, in perpetuity, uh, I thought it might be prudent to make a uh, educational video and outline some of the features, the benefits, um, and some of the characteristics that make microtonal systems a bit more unique than traditional systems. So I'm going to quickly cover how uh, I lay out a, a fingerboard uh, manually. There are online calculators and CNC machines uh, that can do it quite easily for you. However, uh, for those who are just curious about the process or um, don't have access to more complicated calculators, CNC machines, laser cutters, things of that nature, um, let's go through some of the math and uh, explain what the heck's going on with uh, microtonal systems. So I brought you folks uh, a bit closer in just to look at the uh, microtonal fretboard I have here. But I also do want to cover uh, a quick definition just before we jump into how a fingerboard uh, is laid out. Uh, the definition I just want to get out of the way is scale length and what it, uh, what it is. Scale length is the maximum uh, distance a string can vibrate. So on a guitar, a string is typically suspended over across a bridge comes over the fingerboard and its next point of contact will be the nut. That distance is the maximum uh, scale length. So every brand uh, has uh, a unique scale length. Some share them, some don't. Uh, Fender has a maximum distance from their bridge to their nut of 25 and a half inches. Uh, Gibson is typically 24 and three quarters. PRS uh, guitars are about 25. Uh, now, the advantages of a longer scale length will give you better tuning stability at lower pitches. So bass guitars have a substantially longer scale length, 32, 34 inches. Uh, for instruments that want to perform at higher pitches uh, and have more tuning stability, uh, like ukuleles, uh, violins, they typically have a pretty short scale length. So uh, guitars are in and around 25 inches, basses around 34, um, and uh, really student guitars and anything shorter, uh, 20 inches and under. So all of that is the maximum scale length. Now, if you think about it, the purpose of a fret is to simply uh, reduce the length of the scale by a uh, predetermined amount. Because as you press your finger into the fingerboard, you are pressing the string down. That string is then being suspended across uh, a fret, uh, a metal bar that is inserted into the fingerboard at a calculated position, thereby reducing the overall scale length. That reduction in the scale length creates a higher pitch. So you can uh, create uh, chords and melodies, uh, scales, solos, w whatever you want to do. It's really just a mathematical calculation of reduced scale lengths. But regardless of your choice, how do we lay that onto a fingerboard? And that's what we're going to get into. Now there are two methods you can use for calculating a scale length. Uh, one measures from the nut to the first fret, and the other one measures from the bridge to the first fret. Uh, the first one we will go through with is the distance from the nut to the first fret. Without getting into the history of <laughs> where this number came from, uh, the magic number we want to use here is 17.817. So that measures from the nut to the first fret. So the best way to do this is you have your magic number, 17.817. Now you could do this in Imperial where it's 27 inches, which is in this case the uh, Imperial length of uh, the fingerboard here for the microtonal system. Um, but I'm gonna be using it in metric, which is 685 millimeters because millimeters are a bit easier to count. Take the overall scale length, divide it by 
17.817, again, the magic number, and you end up with a number of 38.4. So that is the distance from the fingerboard to the first fret. Now, how do I calculate the distance from the first fret to the second fret in this? Now, that's pretty simple. All you do is take away the uh, distance of your initial calculation, 38.4, from the overall scale length. So that's, for, uh, that's the first fret to the nut, of course, and then 685 minus 380, uh, 38.4, excuse me. So that gives you a new scale length of 646.6. So that's my new scale length because I am calculating how much uh, I've reduced by the first fret. So in principle, all you're doing is, again, uh, reducing your, uh, you're reducing your scale length and imagining that each fret becomes the new nut. That's really all your frets are, are temporary nuts uh, that you selectively use to reduce your scale length to create melodies. So you just apply the same magic number, 646.6 divided by 17.817, and you get 36.29. And that's your second fret. Your first fret to the nut, our first fret from the nut was 38.4, that distance, and then the distance from the first fret to the second fret is 36.29. And you'll eventually uh, get uh, all the way through. You can, if you want to do 24 frets or 21 frets, you just carry all of that on, reduce the fret amount by the overall scale length, and continue on until you have the number of frets that you want. Now the second method we're going to cover here does not go from the nut to the fret, but rather goes from the bridge to the fret and you can calculate that distance and lay it out. So, so let's cover that one. This method is called the Scala or Scala method, which goes from the bridge to the fret. In Western music, we have 12 semitones to an octave. Uh, if you want to learn more about that, there are plenty of videos, but I am going to gloss over that fact. Now the 12th root of 2 is a key number for this method. The 12 refers to the 12 semitones uh, required to get to a full octave. Now you could repeat this method for as many octaves as you like, but uh, ultimately you, you need this number to know how to get from the bridge to the first fret. Uh, the number you get with this is one point, and we're going to use a number of decimal spaces, uh, 0, 5, 9, 5. This is the magic number that you use for dividing across your uh, overall scale length, which is again, in the case of this uh, microtonal guitar, it's 27 inches, it's a baritone, but it's 685 millimeters, uh, divided by 1.0595, uh, you get 640, uh, what is it? 646.53. So. That is the distance from the bridge to fret one. So my overall scale length minus the new amount is 38.5. That is the distance from my nut to my first fret. And uh, to calculate the uh, distance from the bridge to the second fret, you simply take the new amount, divide by 1.0595, and uh, you get 610.22. And that's the distance of the bridge to second fret overall. And just like the first method, you carry this through all the way down the fingerboard until you get to the desired amount of frets. So how do I do a microtonal fingerboard? Now there are many different types of microtonal fingerboards. However, this one is uh, pretty simple because the client asked for uh, the ability to play um, regular 12-tone uh, equal temperament uh, notes uh, whilst having the option to play semitonal notes in between. So half sharps, half flats, but they can also, uh, it's going to be a little tricky to change up their technique, but uh, be able to play uh, regular, quote-unquote, regular chords as they come. So the equal temperament system 
It's still an equal temperament system. However, instead of having 12 tones per octave, now it's 24 tones per octave. So we get a new magic number. And that magic number is 1.029. Nine, three. So that is our new magic number. So this is for an equal temperament system that is microtonal. 685 overall scale length divided by 1.0293. Again, this is measuring from the bridge to, the, to my first fret now. Uh, and that will be 665.5. So now, all you have to do is uh, the exact same process, 47 more times. Uh, 665.5, again, that's the distance reduced from the nut to the first fret, uh, divided by the microtonal uh, magic number, 1.0293, and that will give you the distance from the bridge to the second fret. And simply just carrying that down all the way through uh, until you get very, very tired and uh, bored of laying out frets. Now something else you're going to need to pick out uh, when you're deciding your scale length is the gauge of your fret wire because if you're going to be doing a microtonal system with, uh, in this case, two octaves, which adds up to uh, 48 frets, of course, um, your fret crowns are going to start overlapping if you want to use jumbo fret wire. So I'm going to do the last two frets here, the 48th and the 47th fret. Now you can see how close they are with a 27 inch scale. So if you go asking a luthier for a, I want a two octave um, microtonal neck at 25 uh, inch scale, uh, these frets aren't gonna fit. You're not gonna get um, 48 frets inside that fretboard. There's just no way. So this is about as close as I would say for a two octave. It's gonna be a baritone. It's gonna be 27 inches um, if you're looking at this scale length. Now I'm just gonna use my little chair doctor stuff here. I've been really enjoying this, this process. And this is just really thinly watered down glue. So now hopefully folks can, you can see how much room there is in between those two frets. 2.3, let's see, yeah, there it is. So 2.43 mil between that. So, you know, that's that's just the, mathematically what it is. <sighs> I'm gonna just use some water on that now and get rid of that uh, excess glue before it uh, dries up on me. Because of the blind fret ends, each fret needs to be cut to a specific length and the tang removed at the fret ends prior to insertion. Uh, here you can see me using the Chair Doctor uh, syringe and glue uh, with a very thin water-based glue to uh, fill the fret slot prior to the fret being hammered in. I found doing short sections of the fret wire uh, with this method is best because you want to wipe away the glue with a very lightly damp rag prior to inserting the frets. Any squeeze out you do get from the hammering process can then be easily wiped away again. And worst case scenario, this Chair Doctor glue dries very clear and is very easily removed with a fine scalpel or a uh, fine chisel during any fret working. Each of these frets will also be pressed in with a call to make sure that they conform with the fingerboard radius. I hope you folks have enjoyed the video. I will be continuing on this build over the next few weeks and I'll be sure to do uh, updates as it comes along because I'm sure you're interested to see how it sounds. So until then, uh, thanks for watching and see you next time. Mm -hmm.